left, right. Yo, 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 this is the idiom episode. Today we're talking about idioms. Don't know what an idiom is? Stay tuned, find out. I think, I know, I know you're gonna like this episode. This is a cool one. If you're watching uh, on YouTube, throw a comment. Let me know what your favorite idiom is. And uh, if you're listening, shoot me a DM or, uh, you know, make sure you're subscribing to this podcast irregardless. We'd uh, really appreciate that. And uh, I'll see you guys on the other end. Have fun. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. Cheers. 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 My name is Justin DeGiulio. This is episode 111 of Sip Talk. I'm joined by James the Bosnia of Boswell, a man of many trades, accountant, bartender, philosopher, and professional referee. I see you're wearing some sporty referee garb. It's very nice. Um, is that a referee shirt? Are there numbers in the back? No. no. First of all, referees don't have numbers on the referees back. Uh, there's no stripes either, I guess. I don't um, wear, I don't wear, I wear the same thing every day. So I don't like yeah, you know, any, um, any ref- type of clothes. No, in NFL, the referees have numbers on their backs. Don't ask me why I wouldn't know. But um, in soccer, referees don't wear numbers. Um, but I, this is a soccer shirt. And I just, this is just comfortable and loose fitting. Uh, all right. Well, most of my clothes are comfortable and loose fitting when I buy them and less and less as I own them. I think it's just probably where I shop. It must be. Like, <laughs> maybe you just need to turn down the heat on your dryer. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with the amount of calories I consume uh, through liquids filled with alcohol. Um, on that note, though, liquids filled with alcohol. What are you drinking down there? And I, I, I love the, actually this new start time as we can see in your window. It's bright and sunny. Outside. And then it gets dark. And then in, in my guess is in the next 20 minutes or so, it'll be pitch black outside. So or at least we won't be able to see. It'll be darker outside than it is inside. We won't be able to see it all outside. Um, but it's a nice transition. Um, yeah, that'll last for another two or three months before it starts getting dark too early again. Yeah, exactly. What, do, what are you drinking down there in, in currently sunny South Carolina? I am sticking with the usual bush ice and boxed wine. Oh, you were a big, uh, big fan. You, you must buy a, a lot of boxed wine. Uh, you know, one box, it's like three liters or something. So that's, oh, that's equivalent that's about what, four like two or three bottles. days, four days. No, I go through, I can get like 10 to 20 days out of a box of wine. I'm not drinking too heavily. <laughs> Very nice. Do you recycle that? The, so the plastic bag that the wine is in, I don't think you can recycle, but I recycle the cardboard box. Mm, very good of you. Very good of you. Um, I'm what about gonna, yourself? I'm going to drink, uh, I got a little little left of this Lagavulin, and uh, I guess it's special it's, uh, House of Lannister. Hear me roar. It's uh, a single malt scotch from the Game of Thrones collection. So it's special and Lagavulin and hands uh, Game of Thrones, probably one of my least favorite TV shows. I maybe watched two or three episodes. I don't dis. I, I'm just not uninterested. But Lagavulin, uh, one of my favorite scotches. So. I'm going to pour myself a little glass of that. It's been a good week. I've, I have I didn't drink, you know, two or three hours out of most of the days. So I'll pour a little of that in the glass and now we'll get started. So today we're talking about idioms. Idioms are English. Uh, is it only in American English or it's pretty? No, pretty idioms common exist for- in every language. Well, OK, fair enough. We're talking about American English and, and at least just some general English idioms. But idioms are phrases that at surface value mean one thing, but uh, actually mean something completely different. So uh, do you have a better way to describe that? Um, the, the, they're metaphors for for something else but very poor metaphors in the sense that the meaning of the metaphor is implied in many of the cases. Some of them are easier to understand than others. If you, if you read them, if you take them literally, some of them are pretty tough to figure out what they would possibly mean if you haven't been exposed to them. 
I also looked up a couple um, idioms in other languages. Um, Ooh, I was going to try to grab some Spanish ones. I, I ran out of time in, in the preparation for the. Uh, I found two that I liked: one Chinese and one French. Hey, Queen Hope on Tic Tic Tac. Nice to see you. Uh, you want so you want to get those out of the way? Yeah, because um, I think I, you know the the funny part about the idioms is that for ESL English as second language type people, they are nearly impossible to comprehend until you have a very good grasp on the language. Well, it's the same for learning any anyway, language as a second language. Because I was in Spain, I had the same problem where there would be some phrases that they'd say that like I could understand them, but I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> all right. So here's one from the Chinese that I really like, which is emit <laughs> smoke from seven orifices. Emit smoke from seven orifices. Um, hmm. Does that mean like you're full of shit, which is probably also another idiom? No, that's the, that is that is definitely an idiom. But <laughs> emit smoke from seven orifices means you're really, really mad. Hmm. So you're basically on fire inside. Hi, Irma and hi, Lisa. What's up, ladies? Uh, For those of you listening, you, um, please share us your favorite idioms as well. Like we want stuff that we haven't come up with. Just, there's thousands of them. Oh, yeah. I I I was thinking like the, so. I mean, I use idioms often enough, but I was thinking like I was going to come across like 12 to 15 that are like super common. And then the others would be relatively obscure. But, you know, I went through I got a list of about 100. I'm going to run through a lot of them. I highlighted some that that stand out. Well, they stand out now that they're highlighted, at least. But um, I found a list of like 1500. Holy fuck. Yeah. I mean, there were some lists I couldn't I couldn't even, uh, you know, and, and then some of them weren't so much idioms as in kind of spot on metaphors, which I, I omitted those because I to me, that just didn't count. An idiom to me has to mean something that it doesn't, you know, in. On the surface me, needs to mean something that it doesn't mean in context or, you know, in in application of the phrase. Um, so, so here's the French one. And I really like this one. I think it's pretty easy to guess, but I just like the imagery. I've got other cats to whip. Do you know how to pronounce that in, in French? No. Or, or the Chinese one in Chinese? I have other cats to whip. Uh, wait, uh, what did Rash just say? <laughs> Rash, what does that mean? You got, you got to, you got to, you get a mic up here. What does that mean exactly? Exactly what James said. I have other cats to whip. But what is how many cats do you have that you're whipping? That makes no sense. That that means I have a lot to do. Yeah, <laughs> like or like I've got more important things to do. I got other cats to whip. Yeah, I have I have I have other things to do that are more important of what you're asking me to do. So Ra I have other other cats to whip. Um, and I'll take a moment to thank Rosh Galeb. Rosh is live with us now he is moderating the comments he's feeding us so if you guys are sending us comments we may miss some but the instagram guys we definitely catch your comments and rosh feeds them to us TikTok guys uh i'm trying to catch your comments in the corner of my eye but if you're on instagram or facebook rosh is feeding us your comments and also if you want to call in and share some comments and get on the show uh let rosh know in the instagram or facebook comments and uh he will he'll send you the number to call all right. So thank you, Rush. I'm going to run through some of these idioms here. Um, you probably the thing is, I feel like we're going to have a little overlap. So I'm going to I'll just delete the ones that I have that you mentioned. I'm going to I'm going to run through my list. So the first one on my list, and this is some people might find this a little fucked up. I remember being a kid and thinking like, damn, that's fucked up. You said it. my mom used to say this to me as a kid and she used to say, Justin, you're you're a, a white male in, in America. You're a dime a dozen. And uh, you know what dime a dozen is? It's just super common. Yeah, just very common. And uh, my mom used to say that. She's like, oh, you got to set yourself aside. You got to set yourself apart somehow. But you're a dime a dozen. Um, all right. I got a, another one. You, what are you pulling up your list right there? Um, yeah, I've got multiple lists. Right. So beat around the bush. 
Now, beat around the bush, you think like, oh, so there's a bush and somebody's like, I don't know, what are they beating? I, yeah, I always like that. Just like somebody like taking a stick and just hitting a bush. <laughs> the, the, yeah, from all angles, the visual yeah. of beat around the bush. Um, but I'm hoping that we're getting some uh, some ESL people. Ooh, uh, sim- so, all right, let me hit beat the bush. Hit the comment uh, first. Beat around the bush, uh, avoiding saying what you mean, usually because you're a bit uncomfortable with it. Now, uh, the cats to whip. Somebody had a comment on uh, on TikTok. It means similar to I got other fish to fry. Mm-hmm. I got other fish to fry. I don't know if you eat a lot of fried fish um, or you, you visit a lot of fish fryeries. I don't, I don't There's a lot don't, of fish fryeries in Charleston, but I don't. Are there really? I, yeah. I think, think about I how much to- fried seafood they hate, eat down here. You know, I one I need to eat more fish. Uh, no, you don't. But I, <laughs> you don't like fish. I like fish. Um, but I wonder if the if the fish friary, the, the benefit of eating fish really is that you get the good fats from the fish. But when you're eating fried fish, you you the, the fat that's usually in the fry oil is not is not a good fat. Um, all right, all right. I'm gonna so I'm gonna hit a couple of them and then we'll talk about the ones that I, I highlighted here. Better. Well, we had a it. comment, didn't we? Um. Yeah, go ahead and, and and read it out loud. No, no, no. You, you something from TikTok is. Oh like- no the co- the comment was, uh, it's uh, the whipping of the cats is similar to uh, I got <laughs> yeah, I got just- other fish to f- I got other. F- <laughs> Who whips their cats? People don't even walk their cats on a leash and they're whipping their cats. It doesn't make any. Apparently in France, you know, the cat discipline is 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 very very important in medieval Raj comment is in medi- medieval French in medieval France. Yeah, um, I, I got one like this. Was, this is another quick one, but this is probably my favorite for the imagery. The gates are down. The lights are flashing, but the train isn't coming. <laughs> That's uh, that was the one you shared this afternoon. Yeah. Could you uh, I can't articulate that, uh, but I understand it. Can you articulate that? Like what it means? Yes. It's to describe a dumb person. <laughs> Where, like, the I heard, gates I've are done, the lights are the, I've heard the lights are on and no one's home. It's it's a similar idea of like there's all the set like all the signs that something is going to happen are there, but it's not going no, to it's happen. It's not happening. Um, all right, better late than never. Bite the bullet. Now here's a good one. I feel like if Do you, you know where like- bite the bullet comes from. Uh, no, I do not. So, in in warfare, when guns were invented, but before medicine had really advanced, um, like if you got shot on the battlefield, you'd be going back to like field surgery, and they didn't really have anesthetics. So, if they had to perform surgery on you, usually what they would do is they'd give you a bottle of whiskey. And a bullet, and they're cutting your leg or wherever you got shot to get the bullet out and try and fix you, but you don't have any painkillers, no Novocaine, no nothing. So you would get really, really drunk, and then as soon as they start to cut into you, you would bite down on the bullet to like grimace through the pain. So bite the bullet means like, all right, let's just get through this unpleasant yeah, thing. Let's just get it done with. Uh, I I would have thought somewhere along those lines, so that that makes sense. Uh, let me see. I got a comment on TikTok. Let me see. Um, it's like saying I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I always like saying not the sharpest uh, bulb in the shed, which. Yeah, that's mixed like, metaphors. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make like a tree and get yeah. out of here. All right. So we got to bite the bulb. Break a leg. I always, you know, for novice English learners. Break a leg. I, I always like, like, oh, go break a leg. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Break a leg. But break a leg means like, good luck. Do a good job. We're going to we're going to call it a day. Cut someone some slack. So I think slack is like a not most people. If I was like, what is slack? What does that mean? Um, and it means like kind of extra an extra line or extra oh, yeah, slack extra. in the line. So like if you've got a rope, this is slack. Exactly. So you're giving them some some extra, uh, you know, room to do whatever. But it basically means don't be so critical. Um, here's a good one. Cutting corners. I like cutting corners, doing something poorly in order to save time or money. Um, easy does it. Means slow down, really. Uh, out of hand means out of control. 
to get something out of your system. I kind of like that one. Get something out of your system means like you just got to do it. So you, it's just not like uh, you want to like this it. one barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. I wonder if that if that's on my list here. Barking up the wrong tree is, is good. It basically means you're fucking with the wrong person uh, or you're fucking with like and, and you're going to like you're going to like get hit or something like that. Or it just means you're wasting your time on the wrong person. So and and there's nothing negative to come from that. There's just nothing positive to come from it. Um, hitting the ball out of the gate. Is I that... always think like hit the ball out of the park. Hit the ball out of the park. Break a leg actually means this is from Blonde to have more fun. Break a leg actually means hope you make it in the cast of a play or movie or show. So cast in in quotations there. I thought it was more like mm. when, once you're on the cast and you're about to have the performance, break the leg means like good luck in the performance. But where does that come from? Where does it come from? It comes from before it's that from trying acting. to make trying to make the cast to begin with. Maybe I, I don't know. Well, that's, um, that's what that's what uh, we're told. Um, get your act together. Give someone the benefit of the doubt. Now, to me, you know, that doesn't that's not so much an idiom. Give someone the benefit of the doubt. Like to me, that means what it means. Um, I could see how for a non-English speaker, that could be tough, though, well, just because it's a complex. It's a complex sentence and understanding. But that's you know, it's not that complex. Hang in there. Hit the sack. I like it. If you don't know what a sack is, hit the sack. Sack is like the bed or the pillow. You hit the. Yeah. Hit and the similar. It's get her in the sack. Get her in the sack uh it's not rocket science but that again means what it means like rocket I science it's not difficult. rocket surgery it's not rocket surgery uh which is tough because very low oxygen when you're doing surgery on rockets it's tough for the stitches let someone off the hook again you know you get fish on the hook you, someone's on the hook you're kind of letting them go uh again i don't think those are great idioms Maybe uh, little... i got one then i here uh, i like in this one you have to fill in the blank because it depends your mouth's writing checks. Your blank can't cash. Your mouth is writing checks. Your what can't can't cash? Your blank can't check cash. So it depends on the context. Well, you can't, yeah, you can't cash. Your mouth is yeah. writing checks. You can't. Your you know your bark is 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 bigger than your bite. Um, not right. So make a long story short. To me, that's not an idiom. Uh, miss the boat. Also not an idiom. No pain, no gain. I like that one. And then on the ball, on the ball for me was always my go to example of an idiom. Somebody's like, oh, it's an idiom. I'm like, oh, you're not so much on the ball today, are you? And they're like, what? I'm like, well, on the ball. That's a, you know, it's like visualize being on the ball. Um, I think in a similar fashion, on the nose. Right on the nose. Yeah. Hit or or like head. someone say, like, yeah, that's a little too on the nose. Like if someone's a little too blunt in their description of something, yeah, it's a little too on the nose. Um, all right, to pull someone's leg, and that's, that's a, the joke that's a, around or kid with them, yeah. And I, I, you know, my note here is you don't you don't hear some of these idioms so much anymore, uh, which I like. I like, I like pulling, pulling the old. Ooh, I like this one from Miss uh, Miser the Marine, he who doesn't have a dog hunts with cats, yeah. I don't, I don't know that one, he who doesn't have a dog hunts with cats, it's it's. It's kind of the idea of you use whatever tools you have. Um, it's like mm. if you, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I like that one. Oh yeah, we've used that one before in the podcast. Uh, yeah. When you not uh, when you not when you like, don't have like a hammer hurting. when you when you you said when you, when don't you have, have, a have a hammer when you have when, a hammer you have a hammer yeah. everything looks like a nail. All right, so because TikTok, that's the tool that you have. Uh, from TikTok, plenty of fish in the sea. We got Jess and uh, and Queen Queen Hope. There are plenty of fish in the sea. So, but but to me, that is plenty of fish in the sea. Um, you know, along with uh, I, I flipped the page here, but some of them are a bit too kind of spot on. Whereas pull plenty someone... of fish in the sea is one where like we're just so familiar with hearing that that we don't appreciate how how little sense it makes. Well, yeah true but but like pull someone's leg like if you wanted to apply that like what the fuck would that even mean 
Well, if you think about it, literally, if you're pulling someone's leg, you're bothering them, you're messing with them. It, it actually fits pretty close. Mm. Um, here's another one that I really like. It's like herding cats. Yeah, that's a good one. But again, that's kind of spot on. You're not like someone can come. Someone can visualize herding cats and be like, all right, I understand exactly. You can't you can't hurt a cat. Uh, we got Rosh here, uh, raining cats and dogs. That's that's a pretty good one. Um, pull yourself together. Interesting one. Uh, so far, so good. I don't think that's much of an idiom. Speak of the devil. Somebody walks in, you say, speak of the devil. Uh, the last straw. Uh, this is my last straw. Uh, the best of both worlds. All right. That's, that's, time flies when you're having fun to get bent out of shape. We're not touching on these, uh, the definitions on these. I think these ones are pretty easy to make matters worse under the weather. I think that's, you know, if you're like, oh, how's your friend doing? You, again, you're new to the English language. How's your friend doing? Oh, he's under the weather. Yeah, you that know. doesn't make a lot of sense at all. Like, tr translate that to a different language. It just in the other languages, it doesn't make. Uh, bajo del tiempo. Yeah, no, it's not a thing. It's not a phrase in Spanish. Yeah, no, uh, if you were to say that in Spanish, they just look at you like you <laughs> like you should be wearing a helmet, which is another <laughs> idiom. <laughs> you just use an idiot, you, you <laughs> idiot. Uh, <laughs> um, I like. I'm going to continue with the cat one since I apparently have a bunch of them. I like the cats out of the bag. The cats out of cats out of the bag. Uh, I like that one. I like that one. My cheeks are falling off. Means the food is good. Mm, strange, strange. I don't even know. Is that in English? I've never heard my cheeks know. are falling off. That can't be. I would think my cheeks are falling off would mean that's really funny. I would have I would have thought like I'm laughing so hard my cheeks hurt, right? Yeah. Uh, but my cheeks are falling off uh, is a comment we just got. If you guys are watching and, you, and you're not watching or you're listening, you're not watching or listening live. These are the comments that are coming in. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight via TikTok. I don't know what a dog in the fight means. Means like you, you're not, you're not really part of this. You're not, you got nothing to, to lose or gain from the, from whatever. You're just kind of an observer. Uh, I like that. Yep. Though. I don't, I don't have a dog in the fight. Time is money. Time is money is on my list actually. Um, but time is money is what it is. Time, you know, the time costs money. Uh, under the way, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. Uh, I like that one. Yeah. But I don't, uh, to me, it, uh, I, I like the idioms that are like, like, that just don't make any sense. Like those oh, are the then ones let me I... give you one. This is one that I came up with that I use and not everybody gets. Um, I'm going to take her on an offshore fishing adventure. That means you're going to murder her. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Interesting one. <laughs> Interesting one. Uh, I'm glad that's one of your top. top idioms. I don't know. I like it. We get a ton of these things. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty glad that the speed in which we're, we're running through these, but. Uh, oh, um, here's another one. This is probably one of my favorites, actually. Doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. How would you explain that and, and where it's, where, where it's come from? I couldn't begin to tell you where it came <laughs> from, but, but I guess if I had to explain it to someone who didn't speak English, I'd be like, this person is so stupid that they don't know their ass from all of the ground. It's very literal. Well, if you're shitting in the woods, you should, you should dig a hole first. So if you match the two up and you, you got some, yeah, but you still need to be able to figure out which is which. I'll just line them up and push, uh, wrap your head around something. Yeah. Uh, you can say that again, but again, I don't, I, uh... that one's just, well, no, because actually when you say to someone, you can say that again, you're not asking them to say that again. Or you say anything again. You're just kind of like reinforcing their point. If someone says you can say that again to me, I say it again. You can say that again. If someone says you can say that again to me, I'll say it again. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll just get caught in a loop here. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine means I have no idea. All right. Um, here's one. Here's one I love that I, ne I never hear anymore. I never hear this anymore. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Also, kill two birds with one stone. I like the two birds. Yeah, I, ah, shit, I don't even think it's on my list. I, li I like the bird idioms. The bird idioms are definitely 
definitely good. Early bird gets a worm. That's a good one. Eats like a bird. Eats like a bird. That one uh, pisses me off, actually, because it's completely wrong. Do birds eat that much? Yeah, birds eat a ton. Based on their weight, birds eat like almost their entire body weight every day. No, no shit. Well, actually, a lot of shit. They, birds shit a lot. If, you know, if you're ever parked under a tree in uh, near Central Park, like, you know, birds do shit a lot. So, yep. I, I guess they just have poor digestive systems. They're probably not a lot of. No, they're just yeah, eating a lot. If you ate your entire body's weight in a day, I would grow. I would grow a lot. I would grow a well, lot. Sure, yeah, you, you, you wouldn't birds grow. Are, you wouldn't grow vertically. Exactly, but birds, you know, birds. But there's eat. also there's a lot there's a lot of mass that's going to not make it to your body that's going to have to be ejected. Uh, very true. A penny for your thoughts. A penny saved is a penny earned. Um. I heard that. I actually heard that in a podcast yesterday. Um, a perfect storm. Um, this is a good one to say around fat people. Oh. Um, the elephant in the room. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lisa, Lisa's comment here. Uh, Justin likes bird idioms and James likes cat idioms. Yeah, cats win. <laughs> yeah, cats just sort of like rock, paper, scissors, except it's more just like paper and scissors. <laughs> I'm the paper in this situation. Um, here's something from the horse's mouth. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, fit as a fiddle. That's another good one. We got some good ones coming in, actually, through the comments, uh, which, which I appreciate you guys on the, on the comments here. Have you heard this one? Um, yeah, I'm parked all the way out in BFE. BFE. It's a southern one. BFE. Bumfuck Egypt. Ah, I I knew I knew the F stood for fuck. I knew that. I knew that. Um yeah, bumfuck. I know yeah, uh, I wouldn't have guessed it though. I don't I wouldn't have guessed the Egypt part of it. Yeah, either that or like I usually just say like, yeah, I'm par- I'm parked all the way out in Guam. Well, the thing is, yeah, you guys got to park far away from the places you go. In in New York City, you just roll up and and uh, you know, and you know walk a half mile from the subway so <laughs> parking isn't a thing uh i got a couple more for you a picture is worth a thousand words actions speak louder than words to add insult in to injury all right we're gonna pick up on these there's some there's some good ones coming up um barking up the wrong tree you got birds of a feather here's i like see i like the birds ones. you like birds birds of a feather flock together People who are often alike are often friends, and it's usually used negatively. <laughs> but uh, um, but that's true. I think that's very true. About uh, this one, like stink on poop. Stink on poop. That's uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I saw a uh, a post the other day, something about how bees aren't telling uh, the flies that that honey's sweeter than shit. Something along those lines. It wasn't an idiom, but I just thought it was a a funny post you know the birds like the honey the fly not the birds the bees like the honey the flies like the shit oh here's another very southern one uh going around your ass to get to your elbow mm. and that means how would you contextualize that um it's just, doing you're calling like, somebody dumb, going way out of your way to accomplish a goal yeah okay. a simple goal um, a similar one, ride an elephant to catch a, gra- a grasshopper. Yeah, I've never heard that. I don't That's an that... African one. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. These foreign language ones, obviously, for me, are that like they just I, they're but that's why i love the fact that english is second language is like that's it's a gr- good reason to discuss the the idioms um good things come to those who wait via that's blind. not really an idiom no yeah again again uh and and the kind of wait this is more proverbial exactly and i and i think that's the idiom is one thing that paints a picture of something that just isn't in reality that's that's the hold up. Bite off more than you can chew. Again, I don't think that's quite an idiom. It is uh, because you're using it to describe situations not related to eating. Yeah, but the correlation is still there, like straight on. You know, yeah, or, but it doesn't have like that. Idioms don't always have to be pure metaphors where they have nothing to do with what the situation is. 
Sure. I'd like more of a reach. That's all. Um, all right. Lon uh, Seven Son says, don't count your chickens before they hatch. I don't know if we hit that one yet. I don't have any chickens. I want to get chickens, actually. Like, that would be, like, I'd love to have some chickens. I, I, like, I like eating eggs, you know? Do you like being woken up at 5 in the morning? I like being woken up. Do you like being woken up at 5 in the morning? I like being woken up. If that's going to keep me up, I'm down for that. I, yeah, well, I, shitty then, alarm then clock. buy a whole bunch of roosters because they'll do that. <laughs> um, I also want goats. Like, I'm sick of mowing the lawn. If I can just get a um, big fence and a lot of goats, or two goats even, I'm cool with that. Um, all right. Uh, break the ice. Break the ice is a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Uh, and I think that's that's kind of spot on when it comes to idioms. By, so here's a good one. By the skin of your teeth. You familiar with that one? I am, but it also makes no sense. <laughs> well, you don't have any you skin your teeth very thin, just barely. Just... Yeah, or like hanging on by fingernails. Yeah, you could hang on by fingernails. Your nails are not your fingernails. You could... Yeah, no, not mine. They're not doing much. Uh, uh, comparing apples to oranges costs an arm and a leg. Do something at the drop of a hat. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Eh. Don't count your chickens before they. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just got that one. Um, to rain on someone's parade. They're saving for a rainy day. Slow and <laughs> what? Party poopers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about that one literally. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I went to this party and I shit my pants. Nobody called me a party pooper. <laughs> I just had to leave. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh shit. I actually I, I was driving in the other day on the radio. There was a there was a like a half hour, it was like 40 minutes. It was forever this segment about people shitting their pants. And I was like, I like I don't want to live. Yeah, I get I, there. I, uh, and I, I there's many times I wanted to change the channel, and yet I just I persevered and I got through the whole segment about these people shitting. There were some crazy ass stories about people shitting their pants. I was never been in this situation. Luckily, knock on. I think uh, it's 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 a uni- It has universal appeal. Cork is wood, right? I'm I'm knocking some cork. Yeah, cork is definitely wood. Um, <laughs> that ship has sailed. Um, blondes have more fun. Pot calling the kettle black is a good one. Yeah, but pot. Yeah, you know, well, that kettle man. Yeah, those who live in glass houses. Is that was that on there? Was that a comment? No, that was the. Oh. I, I just remember oh, that one. Yeah, wow. oh, very nice, very nice. Um, all right, spill the beans, James. Spill yeah, the beans. Spill the beans is a good one. That one makes no sense. It may, when it you like, think about what we what we use it for. Spill the beans. Let's see the definition. Give away a secret. Um, sleeping with the fishes. Sleeping with the fishes means you're dead. They found a body yesterday in the Hudson River. As well, there's a few shootings in in Harlem over the weekend. Like some, there's some crazy shootings that have been happening in in uh, in Harlem lately. And uh, yeah, people are sleeping with the fishes. So uh, I'll take a rain check. I'll take that with a grain of salt. Here's a here's one I use often: um, the balls in your court. Or I make reference to that. I make reference to that idiom often. I'm that like, yeah. gets used so often in my office. Really? Yeah. Because there are a lot of times we're like, we'll have, we'll have done our work and we're waiting for the client to provide us with something. So we'll be like, yeah, the ball's in their court. I mean, I'll, I'll change it up and I'll be like, oh, it really depends on whose court the ball's in. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's a really common one. And that's, uh, but it means it's, it's kind of their move. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thinking about like, uh, like it's really like whose balls are in court. <laughs> I just almost spit out a mouthful of scotch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let sleeping dogs lie. That's on my list. Um, let's see what else is there. Walk on eggshells. Sleeping with one eye open. Walk on eggshells. That's a good one. That's a. I like the. I like the walk on eggshell one. That's that's definitely a solid. Wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah, that's not even on my list. And I got a gazillion of these. Wake up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm a little superstitious about waking up on the wrong side of the bed. Every once in a while, I go to get out of the bed and the, on the opposite side I normally get out on. I'm like, ah, no, nah, feet back up. Feet up back shit up. creek. Up, up shit's creek. Shit's creek, right? I Is think it's just, I, I think 
it doesn't need to be plural. It probably can be. Either way, you better hope your boat doesn't have a hole in it. Um, best thing since sliced bread. That was something my mom used a lot when I was growing up. Huh? It's, it's the yeah. best thing since sliced bread. I guess she must have been around like before bread was sliced. Um, that was a relatively recent invention, actually. Well, not that recent. What do you mean by relatively? Like bread, oh, was, bread was invented <laughs> 3,000 years ago. And they, and the, I enjoy buying the loaf of bread where you cut it yourself. You get a nice Italian. 1928. Oh, all right. Well, you know, my, maybe it, it became really popular in like the 50s or something when my mom was uh, just starting to eat some sandwiches. How about uh, below the radar? Below the radar. Mm. Mm, like our podcast. Uh, the devil's in the details. The early bird. We got that early bird gets a worm. Uh, I used that in my office. Elephant in the room we used. Can't have uh, your cake and eat it too, says blondes have more fun. Oh, that's literally next to my list. Can't have huh. your... But, but so you got to figure out where did that, you know, the derivation of, of, so there was a point in time where people like to really not eat their cake and save it. They're like, oh, I really want to eat this cake. Like it looks so delicious, but I want to save it because it looks so elegant. This is a really nice looking cake. Is that the origin or are you just making this up? Well, I imagine the amount of detail they put into cakes, like, you know, making a cake back in the day with the piping and the little cake, cake flowers and the sparkly cake sparkle things. Right, it's a work of art. Like, look at a big wedding cake that doesn't sag. Those things cost like thousands of dollars, too. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't know. I'm not I'm not that much of a. I, I'm not even. So the thing is, somebody gives me a piece of cake, and I'm like, oh, I want the biggest. Piece. Like, if I've committed to eating a piece of cake, I want like the biggest piece of cake. Like, you know that like nauseous feeling you have when you eat too much sugar. Like, I will not eat, as well as you do. <laughs> clearly not. I will eat cake until like. So there's no more cake, basically. Like, I'll scrape the frosting. But I'm not a cake person. Like, if there's a cake around, I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested. But the second I engage in the cake, it's like fucking crack. It's really, really bad. So I'd rather have my cake than eat it most of the time. I'll take my pretty looking cake. Um, there are other fish in the sea. Is uh, not quite plenty of fish in the sea, but same idea. There's a method to the madness. No such thing as a free lunch. Mm -hmm. Throw caution to the wind. You can't get a whole bunch of throwing ones here. All right. Throw the throwing ones. Throw the throwing ones out there. I got to throw in the my, towel. My own notes here. Ooh, throw, throw in the towel. Throw in the towel. All right. Uh, throw someone for a loop. Ooh, throw me for a loop. Oh, I, I love this one. Throw someone under the bus. Yeah, I like that. Throw somebody under the I get thrown under the bus a lot. Um, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. What does that even mean? Um, I'm, I'm like, don't get rid of something good while discarding the bad. Okay. Oh, have you heard this one? My mom used it with me all the time, and it always made me mad. Nothing. Cutting your nose off to spite your face. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fucked up one. That that was always very graphic in my mind. It's like a Da Vinci type of, but but more gruesome. Uh, go so, fly a kite, D Gong says. Go fly a kite. Be the master of your domain via TikTok. Um, these, I, 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 I like these. Uh, the sm snowball effect I got. Uh, here's okay. I got a couple on these. Um, a little learning is a dangerous thing. Uh, That's why I try not to learn at all. <laughs> uh, a snowball's chance in hell. I like. And then uh, for whatever when reason, hell freezes my, over, when hell freezes over, then my mind went to a, a fart in church. <laughs> <laughs> Man who <laughs> fart in church sitting on pew. <laughs> um, and then I got a Cub Scout in a whorehouse, <laughs> which which is always one. I uh, like uh, a whore in church, like a whore in church is. Uh, yeah, is uh, is on my list also. And a boner in sweatpants was the last on my. <laughs> um. So a uh, stitch in time. <laughs> Sorry, stitch like time might actually fix the the boater and sweatpants problem. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's a type of fabric. It's just not a very, you know, <laughs> very flexible fabric. Um, or gym shorts. I've heard uh, 
Yeah, either either way. Stitching time saves nine. A storm in a teacup means to make a big fuss out of a small problem. An apple a day keeps the doctor away um, because doctors don't like apples, I think. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Here's you see, one. like when I hear an apple a day keeps a doctor away, I just have this image of like a doctor coming on like a house visit. <laughs> it's someone winging an apple at him. Yeah, but that's but that if you again, if English is your well, I mean, I guess most people know that manzanas are very healthy. So, but yeah, I'm just imagining like but, chucking apples at. But doctors. that's the best part. That's the best part about the idioms is that like you you get this m- m- visual in your mind. Uh, here's a good one: as right as rain. You know what that means? Um, it's, it's correct. Oh, yeah, it means it's perfect. Um, I like this one. The jury's still out on this one. Oh, jury is still out. Jury is still out means there's no decision yet. Um, another one that I like to use a lot is, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna roll the dice on this. I was waiting for you to tell me what. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Oh shit! Um, burn bridges means to do, to ruin, destroy relationships. I used that one yesterday in my meeting with the bosses. Oh, I'm leaving, but I don't want to burn this bridge. That's exactly what we said. My name is James the Bosnian of Boswell, and I might be back. I don't plan to be back, but if I do, I hope you'll welcome me with open arms. But you, you're actually like recapping the entire meeting. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm sure. I, we we'll, we can talk off, off air about it, but I'm happy to I'm happy to hear that meeting took place. Um, so I've been having meetings like yours, but from the other side of the table lately. It's a tough part about the merger, but you know. so look. So he, I, I'll I'll share this with you actually because I think it's it's not an idiom, but it's you know we're we're off topic a little bit. But here's what I've been telling people about this merger, because we're still in our office right now. And we're waiting, you know, on on making this move. But I've been telling people like, look, you know, when you're moving, right, like you packed your, you got boxes packed, and you're like, kind of holding off on like doing laundry and like vacuuming, because you're kind of waiting for the next other shoe to drop, which is an idiom. And you're like waiting on the next move. But I'm telling people like, look, like I feel like I'm like packed up. I'm ready to go. I'm like holding off and doing laundry. But day by day, I feel like I'm running out of underwear. (laughs) I'm just like, I got to either I got to either suck it up and do a lot of shit at home. Suck it up, idiom. Take it, take, take it there. Take care of it at home Um, or just like, you know, start moving my boxes prematurely. So um, shit or get off the pot. Shit or get off the pot. Exactly. So I'm I'm feeling that I'm, I'm like on that level. A lot of idioms involved with with that aspect of the merger. So um, calm before the storm, come rain or shine. Curio- sweep under the rug. Sweep it under the rug. Good one. Curiosity killed the cat. Um, here's a, tell me what this means. Cut the mustard. Is that like of high enough quality? It means that, yeah, you got to do a good job. Uh, uh, different from cut the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> So you cut the mustard means you got to do a good job. Who cut the cheese means who <laughs> shat in their pants. <laughs> or, uh, uh, let's see. What else? We, what else we have? Um, don't beat a dead horse. Uh, which if, uh, in business, I see a lot of people I'm just like, dude, like, let's go. It's, it's over with. Uh, every dog is his day. Familiarity breeds contempt. Fit as a fiddle. Fortune favors the bold to get a second wind. Which isn't a good thing if someone's cut the cheese. (laughs) Uh, Or to break wind. That also means Uh, to get wind of something. Hopefully it's not the cheese. (laughs) Uh, Or if there's an open flame to go down in flames. (laughs) Um, Um, I I use. uh, Yeah, like like I use that one very often when I'm in a bar. Like get shot down in flames. Hmm. That's that's my typical experience. What happened over there, James? I got shot down in flames. Uh, I went down in flames. Haste makes waste. Have your head in the clouds. Hi, Maria. That's like uh, not knowing your asshole from. A, I don't think that's a phrase. Not knowing your asshole from a hole in the ground. No, it totally is. 
So, you know, Adam, who has joined this podcast before. Uh, hi, Maria. Uh, Adam had Adam. I don't know that he has a full grasp on idioms, so <laughs> he kind of makes that he kind of he makes them up. So I got I got one of my notes, page. I like shooting almost. fish in a barrel. Well, he he, <laughs> he would say it's like eating lunch, uh, uh, eating a fish lunch out of a barrel. Like he would he would kind of he grasp it at straws. <laughs> uh, but but I, I love Adam's Adam's fake idioms, I guess, oh. for lack of a better phrase. Shit a brick. Shit a brick. Uh, <laughs> it's a great line from uh, uh, Christmas Vacation, the Chevy Chase movie. Uh, and so the, the little girl goes, oh, I think I think my dad was shitting bricks. And, and the adult goes, oh, you shouldn't say that. And she goes, oh, I think my my dad was shitting rocks. Uh, all right, I got. I'm gonna skip a few. I'm gonna skip a few so I can, so I can, because we're 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 at the 45 minute mark, man. And hey, drawer, what's up? Uh, nice to see you, Alejandro Salinas Chapa. Welcome. Uh, nice to see you guys. One bad apple spoils the bunch. Rob uh, the cradle. Rob the cradle. Oh, that's that's you get in trouble these days. Uh, so uh, all right. Oh. Rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Oddly specific. What is what does that mean? She's working for nothing or something? Kind of. It's like taking superficial actions or meaningless actions to mask a much bigger problem. Uh, okay, fair enough. I'm going to take a pause right now. And those of you who are watching us live, I'd like to invite you to visit YouTube dot com you can type that into your web browser as www.youtube.com and uh search for sip talk you can find us on youtube you can watch us if you get really bored this is the 111th episode so there are many many episodes where you can watch us drink and ramble on about nothing sometimes about something uh sometimes we're just arguing with each other and oftentimes it's just me arguing with myself. Um, and, and if you losing don't want somehow and, and oftentimes losing. And if you don't want to watch us, you can listen to us on all audio podcast platforms. We are everywhere. We are on Spotify. We're on Apple podcasts. We're on anchor. We're on. I don't know. There's a, there's a bunch of the things where you listen to the things. Um, find us there subscribe and let us know what you want to hear about the idiom podcast was literally something we mentioned in the last one of the last two episodes and uh and here we are talking about a little hair of the dog here lisa says does needle on a haystack count as one i think it does needle in the haystack is uh fourth to last on the list of the ones that i uh i well there you go lisa you ruined the whole cast yeah well no we we you know break a leg there we I got I got about 30 more left. I use this a lot. Chopped liver. What am I? Chopped liver? I don't it's I don't know. Worthless. Where, yeah, like like forgotten about, kind of overlooked. Like who's eating chopped liver? Uh so here's the thing. You remember uh growing up, I had two like similar age guys that lived lived on my street. Uh um Kevin and Chris. Kevin and Chris. And uh one time Kevin was over and we like asked like, oh, if, you know, we asked our parents, like if somebody can hang out with the other person or something. And my mom called his mom and we overheard them on the phone. And my mom, somebody was like, oh, it was a Pope Catholic. And then they laughed like, oh, can can Justin hang out with Chris? And, and his mom was like, oh, it was a Pope Catholic. You had the bear and, shit in the woods. And, and then they and then they laughed. You say, does the Pope shit in the woods? Yeah, I always use now I use the does the Pope shit in the woods. Um but but I had and, and we were asked we're like and then and that was the end of the phone call. She, she's like, oh, there's a pump guy. I'm like, huh? All right, cool. Talk to you later. And then and then my mom like went on to doing her thing, and we were just like, okay, what? Who? This Pope guy, the, you know, the the the, the church guy. Is he uh, is he Catholic or maybe he's like Methodist? Like like I we we had this whole conversation about the Pope. We didn't know if he was Catholic or not. Um, I got a leg to stand. Do you have a leg to stand on? That's a good one um to right. swing a stick at you got more more something or other than you can swing a stick at yeah swing a stick at shake a stick at shake a stick at oh yeah 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 you're not swinging the so you're shaking it um all right so here's an atomism that's on my notes uh he was having a meeting with his team and he said look guys 
as a senior agent, I want my whole team to be above the forest on this. <laughs> what? You know, there's a, I can't think I can't think of the idiom, but it's like see above the the forest line. Well, it's like um like failing to see the forest for the trees well, or like you're one. too close to something. Yeah, that's one. There's another one about like seeing the horizon or something, but somehow he like mixed them up. But either way, he just delivered it like deadpan and me and a couple of other guys were just kind of looking. Well, at and you want it like you could say above the fray. Above the fray, above the forest line, above the tree line, I think is it might be one. Um, I've never heard that. But to be over the forest on this, I need my whole team to be over the forest on this, uh, which which I love. And I, I actually was for a while I was taking notes because he's he's a uh, well he is a man of morals. He's also a man of interesting phrases. Uh, head over heels means to be in love. Up in arms means to be upset. A chip off the old block means you're similar to your parents. To toot your own horn. Do you hear anybody say toot your own horn? I feel like yeah, that's what my, my mom would say. Um, I use that from time to time because uh, in the oh, first Jackass says, movie. I can, I can picture you saying that. Jackass movies. <laughs> great movies. Great movies. Um, where, like, where, not going to be not gonna be the one to toot my own horn, but uh, beep, beep. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's been a long I think, time. I think that was after the urban kayaking episode. Urban kayaking. What the fuck happened there? They they took a kayak on city streets. I feel like that would only work in like San Francisco. Uh, that might've been, I, I don't know. They did it in maybe New York, but like oh. they just took it like the kayak and like sent it down like hills and city streets or they put like the kayak and like fountains in front of buildings. Mm, I mean, that sounds like a fucking death trap to me. Um, so we have these biker gangs in New York where these guys show up on like ATVs and motorcycles. Doesn't sound like a bike. No, no. It, but they just have like any like off road vehicles. They have dirt bikes, motor, real motorcycles, ATVs, and then a lot of them don't have helmets on, and they just they're loud as fuck. The exhausts are all like cut off, and they just zip up and down the streets with no licenses. Uh, and they come in gangs and cops have done nothing about them for years. Every once in a while, you hear about like a little bus where the cops get like two two dudes out of like 30 at a time. And they just continue to terrorize the city. And like, you'll be well, think about it. If you're the cops, what, how are you going to do? What are you going to exactly, do? Exactly. Exactly. So it's 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 tough unless like you're really going to just go after you need them. like 100 cops. Yeah. Cops on motorcycles too. like cops and cop cars aren't it's not going to work. And a lot of the a lot of the two wheeled uh cops are on mopeds so like that's not you know the I mean, top it out at 32 miles an hour so but i watched i watched a guy who was standing on a seat today uh it was a video i didn't i didn't watch in person it was a video on, on instagram and the guy's like standing on the back of his uh dirt bike seat and then he like goes to sit back down but somehow he kind of loses control of the bike and then he's hanging off the side of the bike like trying to get himself back on and he side swipes a car and the bike just keeps going, but he just kind of cartwheels through the air. Um, he managed to jog it off, so he, he survived. And then he just got in the bike and kept running. So I'm, I'm sure the so car some was, dudes got like massive damage yeah, I'm to sure his the car. Whole bumper and the taillight of this car just all fucked. And he, you know, I'm, I don't know. It'll get public, and I'm sure he'll end up probably getting in trouble. I don't know. People are getting shooting people on camera and getting off. So who the fuck knows these days? Um Selling like hotcakes. Now, if you're if you're like English ESL type person, you might you might be like, OK, well, do people wait for the cakes to how do hotcakes sell? I think it was that like at the time that the phrase came around, hotcakes were a relatively recent invention. I don't I think all cakes are hot before they get cold. No, but like hotcakes are specific, like not hot cakes, but hotcakes. One word. Uh, and it, I, I think yeah. they, they're an actual thing. It would be like, I, I, I don't know, dude. Like to me, if anyone says it's selling like hotcakes, I immediately assume that you were born before 1950. <laughs> when when the hotcakes were popular um, <laughs> to burn a candle at both ends. I mean, you're kind of working without rest. Uh, spinning your wheels means you're working, but you're not going anywhere. Burning the midnight oil means you are working late. Apparently, back in the day, they had different oil for the late nights, so you were burning into your your late night oil. Um, here's one 
and you'll like chicken or the egg. The egg. Well, obviously. But anybody who argues that, it's it's really frustrating for anybody who understands kind of biology and and just understands uh, I don't know what else, what other science you would call it, but um, evolution. <laughs> and then somebody's like, "Oh, but no, but it's tough. You you can't tell." It's like, no, it's, no, it's, no, no. It's, eggs have been around yeah, for <laughs> way longer. <laughs> well, eggs in general. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but the chicken ch- or but, the egg. It's the chi- chicken or the egg. It's not saying the chicken egg. It's the egg. Okay, but usually when it's referred to, they're still referring to the chicken egg. Well, they should be more precise with their language. But still, the chicken egg existed before the chicken. That's where the chicken came from but who laid the egg is something similar very similar to a chicken um oh headed, that's another one to lay an egg to lay an egg is that a thing i don't i don't think that's a thing you've never heard that one i mean i've heard of people lay, not people laying eggs but eggs you've never heard eggs. the phrase to lay an egg no to lay an egg means like fail like mm. Mm. all right hot-headed uh, it means you're easily angered. Doesn't mean so. If you were to hear that and and not be an English speaker, you might be like, "Oh, maybe he's sick. He's hot headed." But no, it means you're easily angered. To Same cut, thing with hot blooded. Exactly to cut someone down to size or to put in one's place usually means you're dealing with an arrogant person and you're you're kind of criticizing them. And oh, speaking of, uh, so Rosh put hot and bothered on there, and it made me think of um. In hot and Spanish, bother means hot and bother means horny usually. Um, well, so like in Spanish, there's to be warm and there's to be hot, and there's a very big difference. And for non-native speakers, it's very easy to mistake the two. So, like, if you want to say I'm hot, like it's really hot in here, uh, like say like tengo calor, which means like I have heat. Yeah. Like if you say like estoy caliente, that means something very different. <laughs> Um, all right. To face the music means to face the criticism or the reprimand. Uh, hold Netflix your horse. and chill. Netflix and chill. Yeah, I guess. I guess that would be an idiom, right? Like that'd be a very new idiom. It, yeah. Um, hold your horses means to be patient. Jump the gun comes from track. Being or, impatient. Yeah, being, being impatient. Or ju- you know, before you're told to go, you go. To let your hair down. You know what that means? To, to relax. To me. To escape to me. Yeah. No. Yeah. It means to relax. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I have. I figured you, you haven't. Um. Oh, how about three sheets to the wind? Three sheets to the wind means you're drunk. I like that one. <laughs> stick to your guns means how would you how would you explain stick to your guns? Like you stick into sticking to your guns means that you're you're not you're backing double, down from a stance or an opinion. Yeah, you're, you doub- hold- you're doubling down on on your point of view. Uh, doubling down also an idiom yeah really blackjack good. yep uh no shit sherlock it's the one you don't hear very often but yeah or like. way to go einstein way to go einstein. einstein einstein i feel like there's another one with einstein too um full of shit did we did i use full of shit earlier yeah um maybe mm. Dude, I have so, I have so many more of these too. I have another three or four pages of these. I, there's no way, and I and then they never end. They're just figures of speech that are so brilliant, so in incomprehensible uh, from uh, different languages. Shahira Baba says that we should translate foreign ones. Um, I think that would be good. So, like, maybe we do that, like as a first segment on the Thursday cast, like we 15 need, or 20 minutes of foreign ones. Well, the foreign ones, I don't know. And, 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 and it's, it, it puts me in the, in the situation of the people that English is their second language. So we would need some foreign language speakers to join us. Uh, I'm looking up some foreign ones right now. So if at this point we can recruit some foreign language speakers who'd like to join us by audio or if you're feeling good looking, join us by video. Uh, I, I like this one. Uh, this is a Spanish one. Um, the translation would be the airplane got away from me. I don't know that one. I wouldn't have. I, I, I'm cheating because it tells me the airplane got away with got away from me means I forgot. Oh, wow. OK, interesting. Definitely not from the, pi- the pilot's perspective. 
Um, Shahira says we, we should do the foreign language ones. And she says she can do Arabic. Arabic has some real. Oh, fuck. We hit the hour mark. We are disconnected. Fuck me. Um, all right, guys. Uh, hold, hold up on TikTok. You guys are still live. I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to hit the. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to refresh here. Uh, and we can say our goodbyes. Oh, okay. Let me uh, let me refresh here, and then we can uh, we can do it again. Say our goodbyes that way. All right. We gotta we gotta re up our our stream here. Looks like our stream key refreshes every. Uh... A stream key refreshes every hour or so. So unfortunately, that's that's just how it goes. All right, we're live again. My bad. Thank you, Raj, for uh, for jumping back. Greetings on. and welcome back to the second oh. act. Welcome back to the second act. Um, yeah, so we're going to wrap in a minute, but we can definitely talk about some foreign idioms. Idioms to me are very exciting because they kind of fuck with your brain when you think about them. You have to think about them for it to have any effect on you, which means you have to think about the it's English just, language. Language is fun. You can language do so much fun. with it. Language is fun, but I, uh, now we sound like like burned out sixth grade ESL <laughs> teachers or something. Not ESL, just English teachers. No, English English is a cool language, and it's being it's being fucked over hard. Like we're seeing some very uh, we're seeing the the English language as we know it. We're seeing it change very rapidly, and that's because especially in the U.S., we have so many other cultures that are kind of. Uh, they call it a melting pot, which is also an idiom that are that are uh, colliding with with English. And these people are learning the English words, but they're implementing the language like in Russian. I know there's no articles. There, there's no a. Uh, I, I can't fucking think of that. Well, and yeah. And then like all these foreigners are coming up with phrases like above the trees. No, that's a native English speaker <laughs> <laughs> above the forest line. Above the uh, forest line. No, but but uh, no, we I want my whole team to be above the forest on this was the quote because I wrote it down at the time. Uh, I, I think it's good that we're having all these different influences, though, because I it, do, too. It, I, uh, it's forcing us to evolve and, and additional language pr gives you more perspective. But it's it, it is kind of fucking with something that is somewhat sacred to to the culture. But that's what happens with time. And that is that, you know, like that's life. If your culture is that easily changed by foreign influences, then it wasn't that strong of a culture. I disagree with that statement. I, I think uh, the susceptibility to change isn't indicative. Or it's a strength. positive indication of the culture that you can incorporate other things into it and adapt and change as need be. Sure. Just like your opinion, right? Changed right on a dime there, man. My opinion changes <laughs> depending on the facts and circumstances presented to me. Do we want Shahir Abba to do one in Arabic? Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm, 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 if, you can, if you can send an Arabic uh, idiom before we jump offline, I would totally be down for that. Yeah, just uh, don't put it in the Arabic language because I'm not going to be able to read it. A lot of squiggly lines. Yeah. Uh, I, what is it? Is it called? It's not Sanskrit. That's, that's its own language. Oh, really? I guess the Arabic alphabet is just Arabic. Um, she wants to do it by voice. Let's give her the call. In. Well, if I don't, I don't know what Raj is saying. I don't know that's necessarily the case in the in the comments. But I don't uh, know. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we're told we're told to hold. So we're waiting. We're waiting on this. We're waiting on the Arabic comments to come through. Um, I got, I got another one that I, I've been using a lot, which is like say to say, yeah, that's really on brand. On brand. Yeah, yeah, I like on brand. What would be on brand for this podcast? 
Um, going off topic for 30 minutes. Spending the last 20 minutes <laughs> waiting for, for a comment that may or may not come through. That's kind of on brand while, while we drink up. Um, yeah. You finish your wine? No, I still got about a half glass. All right. All right. I get a glass of scotch. I'm actually looking to milk it into my life outside the podcast. I'm looking to stand up, walk around a little bit. It's nice. It's a nice evening. We got some rain today and the temperature dropped like fucking 25 degrees out of the blue. It's cold wild. front. Yeah, it was humid as shit. And it was like 90 something degrees. And now it's like in the high 60s and it is not humid. So. We've been getting so much rain in Charleston because we got we got brushed by the remnants of that tropical storm. Mm. The son of a goose is a swimmer. Shihiraba says the son of a goose is a swimmer. So the Arabic insults, to my understanding, the Arabic insults are like really graphic. Um, I, I have a handful of Lebanese friends and they tell me that like the arguments in Arabic, like you, you, you cut somebody off in traffic and they shout like, I saw your mom shirtless and it was boring. I danced on her pussy when she was in the grave, like just weird, weird, kind of like weird, oddly descriptive, <laughs> Yeah, oddly, oddly, overly descriptive, like it just, it's weird shit. Um, so when I was in the Netherlands, there were two things that I noticed that I thought were pretty funny, which is that like when people would be speaking, um, like they would be speaking in Dutch, but they would swear in English. <laughs> um, like they could speak English to you. Everybody there spoke English pretty well. But like they'd be speaking in Dutch, but they would swear in English for some reason. And the other thing is, like, if they really wanted to insult you, you know what the like, I, I might be wrong on this one, but like the worst insult that you could get in the Netherlands would be. No idea. Wishing cancer on you. Wow. It's like, I hope you get cancer. That's would deep like, and dark. That's deep and dark. That's. Uh, I know even people I hate, I don't, you know, I just. I, I, I don't have that hatred bone in my body. Like I, I want the best kind of for everybody. And, and even people I have disagreements with, like I still, you know, I want to get past that and then wish them the best. There's and, a few people out there that I wish the worst for. Hmm. Well, I hope you don't w- wish not the worst, man. That's not even, no, right. no, no. There's a few people that I legitimately wish the worst for. Um, none of whom I know personally, thankfully. Well, but that's the thing, people. I I got a a, a comment, a, a direct message on Twitter. Somebody telling me because of some comment that I made, how they were gonna tell everybody to avoid my company and some other shit. Like, dude, you don't even fucking know me. Like that. I don't know. Um, let's wrap up. I want to thank everybody for joining and remind you. This isn't the end. We have a lot more interesting stuff. It's just coming in 30 seconds. So you got to listen to me saying this. I want to remind you to visit YouTube, subscribe to Sip Talk Podcast, visit the audio podcast platforms, and subscribe on the audio podcast platforms. And I was really making up the fact that we have a lot more interesting things to talk about in 30 seconds. I'm out. I'm out. So what you'll have to do is subscribe, visit the old episodes, and uh, listen. And if you don't like what you hear, that's easily changeable. You can send a comment. You can shoot me a DM. Our con- James contact information, James Twitter, his email address, my email address. My phone number is on the YouTube uh, uh, description. So you can reach out to me and let me know what you want to hear about. I will get back to you. And I want to thank all you guys for watching and listening. James, anything you want to add before we no, we, we, any, any user suggestions for, for interesting ideas for podcasts, we, we consider them all. Um, and we've done a number of casts in the past based on user suggestions. So keep them coming. Yeah. A lot of the ideas we get for the podcast are legit, like straight from, uh, straight from you guys that, uh, toughen up buttercup. That's, <laughs> that's an idiom that just came through, um, via uh, TikTok. But we get a lot of our ideas from you guys and we appreciate it. And we do this because we enjoy interacting with you guys. And obviously we like hanging out and having a, having a couple of drinks. So on that note, thank you for joining James. Adios. Cheers. All right. Enjoy. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll stay on. Um, uh, oh, no, 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 eh. 
Sorry, guys. Those of you who didn't hear me say this earlier, we want to thank Rosh Galeb. Rosh is producing the podcast from behind the scenes. He's commenting with you guys on Instagram and Facebook and uh and doing he, a great job by the way. He's 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 doing a great job. I mean he's allowing us to interact with you guys. So just a quick shout out to Rosh. And uh on that note, this is my true adios. I will see you guys later. See ya. All right, sip talk. I am all idiomed out. Uh, let me know if you have not already in the comments what your favorite idiom is. I really like this episode. This is a lot of fun for me. So uh See you guys next time. I like PBR. I just got priced out of it.